welcome to the Ladies in Enrichment Club talk show. Today we have a special guest. Her name is Camilla. Hi, Camilla. Hi, Zelda. Thank you very much for having me here today. It's a real honor and privilege to be invited to talk here today. So thank you very much for that. It's a pleasure. Thank you for taking your time as well uh, to spend with us. Um, can you give us a brief introduction of yourself? Right. So as you said, Zelda, it's Camilla, and I have a surname called Van der Merwe, which is a mouthful. I am a, a thoroughbred, born and raised southern girl. Um, we grew up really in the jungles of Johannesburg. And for those that know Johannesburg, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And now I'm living in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And I trade those jungles, wide open skies, sandy desert views, and that's where I am now. I am, I'm the epitome, I think, of a trailing spouse, as many of us are that go on contracts with our husbands, where I gave up my career and my family and my clients and followed him to pursue his corporate career dreams. I'm here in Abu Dhabi with, uh, I've got a few children. I've got two children, which are my own children. And then I also have two stepchildren. I have a biological son and I also have a beautiful adopted daughter, Nina. And I'm also a very besotted mom of two delicious schnauzer puppies. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Lovely. I like the, it's a big family. I love the it. Big, big, big blended family. family. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to talk about your business. And yeah. can you just uh, tell us why did you choose to follow this, this type of business? And can you tell us more about it? For sure. For sure. So, you know, I have a degree in drama and production studies. And I spent the early, very early part of my career focusing on theater, industrial theater, corporate theater, children's theater. And it dawned on me, thank goodness it dawned on me quite early that I was not, it was unlikely that I was gonna become the next Meryl Streep. I also had my father sort of chirping in my ear saying, you need to, Camilla, you need to go and get a real job. So I took the fundamentals of my degree, which really boiled down to communications. And I started moving into a more environment in South Africa. And I started developing and delivering training and coaching programs to, to mainly to, to corporate people on business English, voice training, accent modulation and, and sort of you know, modulate, modulating accents, uh, business English, that sort of thing. Um, then when we arrived in the UAE in 2014, I was, I was quite privileged. If I look back now, it was quite privileged to, to land a few contracts with some of the bigger training companies and corporate companies here in, in Abu Dhabi, where I delivered much the same thing, which was, you know, business, English communications, presentation, public speaking. But there was a, a, a difference when I moved here. And that was the fact that many of the people in corporates and many people around us are not native English speakers. And they are delivering any of the in-person or virtual communication is being done in a language that is not ultimately familiar with them. So then the Corona season came about and it really gave me the luxury of time to kind of map out what I wanted, which was something more than filling in timesheets and developing content for other companies. So I came up with Camilla Vander M, which is this frankly speaking company. And that's really what it is. It's a, a company that the niche market of that company is on non-native English speaking people, moms, dads, community leads, employees, leaders, managers, whoever it is that is having to deliver presentations or speak in public on whatever platform where English is not their first language. Mm. Um, and so, so that's kind of how I got to Camilla Vander M, frankly speaking, was to focus on that niche of the market. Amazing. Yeah. So many people in this region needs to have a service like that in their companies, 
in there. You know, if the kids go to school and they struggle with the language, oh my, oh my gosh, this is this is a, such a vital service that you are giving. Um, tell me, are you online as well, or are you just focusing on this area? Uh, you said online. Yeah, it's like online training for. Yeah, so. You know, I my big dream at the moment, I'm working one on one and two on one online because of the situation that we find ourselves in. But I would I really would like to be able to go big time online. You know, that's kind of what my big okay. baby dream is. Very good. So this is one of your goals, I presume. Uh, is this like a short term or long term goal? Uh, so sh my short-term goals really is to continue to develop my presence in this area, this region where we're living, as well as my reputation as a, a leader in this field. And if I look at my long-term goals, well, those are quite big. So my short-term, I'm sort of focusing on just the next six months. And then uh, further on from that, I'm looking at developing sort of micro-mind and mastermind groups where I can work with people to role play the specific challenges that non-native English speakers have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Zelda primarily or fundamentally one of those biggest challenges are that we all have a speaking personality, but when we speak in another language, we lose that personality. So it's to harness credible, authentic presence when you're speaking, but still maintain who you are as a person yeah, yeah that's it. it makes sense it makes sense lots of people here they really struggle with this hard uh, i mean uh take for example nannies that uh you know that work in houses and there's always that language barrier uh you know somebody's trying to explain to them how to clean this is just an example and you know it's all over the place and i think that even a service like that uh, would, would benefit people, you know, uh, as well. And uh, they, they will just feel more confident, you know, when they can speak more clear. And so it's an amazing service. Uh, give, give some advice to women out there that would like to start something. I mean, you've only started this business, you said nine months back. So how did you start? What advice can you give? What did, was there something that you learned from this experience? Well, you know, I, I belong to many, many women's groups and the support and the guidance and the encouragement that I've received before this, before I launched this company has been, has been phenomenal. So women's groups are my go-to place and have been my go-to place to get guidance and support. If I had to give advice or give my two cents worth to women out there who are looking at starting or a bit of in a bit of a rut, as you said, was perhaps two things. The first thing is to, for us as women, to aim for genuine generosity with each other, even when it stretches you or makes you uncomfortable. Mm. I think we need to aim to not or, or to not wait for generous opportunities to kind of land in our lap, but to be in them all the time. Because being genuinely generous gives one a tremendous sense of energy and and levity. And it's it's so satisfying. And if 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 I'm generous and I, I get that sensation for myself, I only can only imagine what the person I'm being generous with is is receiving. So I think as we need to keep ourselves along with women that are generous, genuinely generous, authentic, credible women, and, and not be afraid to bounce things off other women, talk with other women, hear their journeys. Because I think that if, if you hear the story of others, that really eliminates the fear of taking the next step. So that's, that's kind of my two cents worth. Right. That's the, I always say the Ladies in the Richmond Club is also about exactly what you just said. We want other women to 
you know, to hear, to see them, not just to hear them on a podcast, but to actually see them on YouTube, uh, you know, right. confessing what they've been through uh, or just to follow their advice and to right. feel, you know, like they can also do it. Uh, yeah. Do you have any social media accounts you would like to share with us? Well, I actually do. I have my, my recent baby, Camilla Vander M., Frankly speaking, that's on Facebook. Um, it's also the same name is also on Instagram. And then I also have a, a working women's upskill group on Facebook. And this is a community group where we as women, be it women that are currently working or women that are looking at working, we, we know that we all need to absorb many more skills than the skills that we have at the moment. So it's a group that facilitates the sharing and transfer of skills and knowledge from one woman to the other. It's a lovely community, much, much really like your Ladies Enrichment Club, which, by the way, has got the coolest branding and the coolest music. <laughs> so I just need to say that to you. Um, so those are, those are my three social media babies and groups that I have. Awesome. awesome. I will share all your social media accounts on this uh, video as well. And thank you. I would really, really like to thank you, Camilla, for joining us today um, and to share your story. And I hope that somebody out there got some inspiration. Um, somebody yesterday told me, even if it's just one woman out there that got inspired by her story, she would be over the moon. And I said, yeah. exactly, the, this is what we are trying to do here. We, I mean, the more, the better. But even if it's just one woman that's feeling down today and she needs that encouragement, um, and this is what it's all about. Thank you so much. And that's a pleasure. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.